on a day like this, in an ocean like this, on a beach like this, there's no way, man, there's no way. I've been invited to go windsurfing. But for me, I don't like joining any sport that involves a lot of falling down. And I know windsurfing involves a lot of falling down. I don't even know why I'm going. I guess just to be polite or to, to see what's, what windsurfing in Taiwan is all about. So I've noticed something that's kind of weird. And I guess it makes sense, but it's kind of weird. Foreigners don't talk to each other or even acknowledge each other here. It's like, and we almost avoid each other. Like if a foreigner gets on the subway car and they see me, they move down the subway car. Maybe it's just me. Actually, you know, I'm the same way. I see a foreigner and I try to avoid them. I don't make eye contact. The other day, to the restaurant I'd ordered, I sat down, had a beer, and a plate in front of me. And these guys who are travelers, all these travelers, came in, looked around, <laughs> turned around and left. And I could have helped them. But I didn't, and I felt bad about that. So I found the place. And um, it looks really difficult. I mean, even on a on a lake that's, that's like a, a plate of glass. I think this sport involves a lot of falling down. You ask most Taiwanese people if they can swim, and the majority can't. And I think that's kind of unusual, being a small island surrounded by the ocean. In fact, what's interesting is, although there, although Taiwan is a small island surrounded by the ocean, you almost never see the ocean. And I guess in that way, it's similar to Kitchener-Waterloo, in the sense that Kitchener-Waterloo has a fairly big river that runs beside it or through Waterloo region. That'd be the Grand River, and yet you never see the Grand River in Kitchener-Waterloo. You see it in Cambridge, which is more of a traditional way to build a city. In Taiwan, it's so unusual to be at a beach or beside a river. For some reason they don't they don't care to be near water. Which I find fascinating. Until recently, like 20 years ago, this was a military base, and maybe that's what it's all about. For 40 years, Taiwan was essentially still at war with mainland China. I guess in some ways it still is. And as such, you, get, you put yourself in a defensive position, not in, you build your cities away from the water and not near, behind seawalls and things like that. Taiwan has a real opportunity to um, be a vacation destination. But it's got a lot of work to do because it, it's, 
a little bit of a difficult country to travel in if you don't speak Chinese. And it doesn't have, unfortunately, what most Western tourists are looking for. And that would be just a relaxing place to sit around and drink beer. <laughs> and besides that, there's other things you can do, of course. Uh, it is very good with um, mountain hiking. It's really not that challenging, but most of the mountain trails are really well maintained. It does have a few other things going for it in terms of being a travel destination. And one of those things is it's a relatively cheap place to live. So, and that's important, at least it is to me when I'm traveling. I have a much better time in cheap countries than I do in expensive countries. The other great thing it has going for it is it's not overrun with tourists. Um, if you go to Thailand or if you go to France, it's just tourists everywhere. I remember even 30 years ago when I was in Italy, I felt like I was just in some kind of cattle pen. And they'd, they'd open the gates and we'd go in and look at something and then we'd you know, all have to filter through. And that was 25, 30 years ago. 35 years ago. And Taiwan is very undiscovered. In terms of countries, I, you know, I haven't been to South Korea. It's probably very similar in terms of how mature the tourist trade is. Philippines is more developed. Vietnam is even more developed. And, and in the 90s, Vietnam, I met people in the 90s, early 90s, who had been in Vietnam, and it was rough going back then. So in 30 years, they've come from rough going to probably my very favorite place to travel in the world. So Taiwan can turn it around, and I'm here to help. So I finally found a purpose for these little hooks at the back of my shoes. There's your little pinky in there, and you can carry your shoes. It's a well-designed pair of shoes. The fact that I'm calling these shoes is very revealing about my mindset. I was a university student, or a university professor for that matter, but if I was a university student, I can't think of a better university to study at than this one. And look at that. Can you imagine this being your university campus? I guess I get to find out if my camera is truly water resistant or not after that giant wave. So the thing I like about the Sony X3000 is um, it's always ready. You just, you just put it in your pocket. Whenever you, whenever you have a thought, you just whip it out hit start and you're recording. It's a perfect vlogging camera because it's so small and it's always ready. The only bad thing about it is out here on the horizon you can 
you can't see it, but I can. There's all these um, container ships and uh, cargo ships. This is a single lens camera. There's no zoom, or there is a zoom, but it's like Chinese algebra trying to figure out how to use it. So all the shots for this camera are the same, like this. But my feeling with things is you're never going to be 100%. If you can get to 80% or 85%, then that's good enough. That's, you know, that's what you need to do. And I say this to my real estate clients too. I say, there's no perfect house. Even if you build a house yourself, you're going to make mistakes. You're going to, you know, say, oh, geez, I should have put a window here and I should have moved this here. You're never going to be at 100%. So the goal in life is to strive for 80%. 80% is always achievable. 90%, the work needed to get to 90% is, is, is not worth it. That's my philosophy of life. <laughs> give up early and give up often. <laughs> That's not bad. It's be satisfied at 80% because there is no 100%. 100% is so hard to achieve, it's not worth it. <laughs>